Hey guys, Tony here from Tony Tech Bytes, and this is the Scythe Shuriken 2 that they sent over to me for review. And this is actually a pretty cool cooler because it fits in the Loki Ghost S1 and it doesn't interfere with any component. So the problem with the Scythe Big Shuriken 3 that they sent over to me a couple months ago was, was that it actually interfered with the M.2 heatsink for the Asus X570i and I had to sort of modify the cooler by taking off some of the fins and that probably impacted the thermal performance of the cooler. This Scythe Shuriken 2 is slightly smaller, it has a 92mm fan versus a 120mm one with the Scythe Big Shuriken 3. You still get 4 heat pipes with this cooler, although I believe they are a little bit shorter and you do get slightly less fins. The cooler overall is just a little bit smaller because there's unlimited RAM compatibility and the cooler only stands at 58 millimeters tall. There's also a nickel plated copper cold plate which is pretty good and it's pretty shiny so I assume that they sanded it down to make sure that it's polished and just better for thermal conductivity so there aren't as many peaks and valleys or imperfections like at a microscopic level for better thermal conductivity. Scythe also sent out some thermal paste that I used to test out this cooler and the thermal conductivity of that thermal paste is about 3.5 watts per meter Kelvin. It's not nearly as high as most thermal paste I've used. However, I believe the rating system is different for each manufacturer, so I don't necessarily think it's gonna be like two times worse than something that's seven watts per meter Kelvin. So installing this cooler is really easy and I really like their HPMS3 mounting system or the Hyper Precision Mounting System 3. Uh, it's really simple to use and I hear it's actually similar to Noctua's. This also includes brackets for almost every socket you can think of like modern Intel sockets as well as AM4 and I believe AM3 and other sockets. So I installed this on an AM4 system uh, with the included AM4 bracket. You just have to install the standoffs and then uh, screw on the two brackets. Then line up the cooler, make sure I have thermal paste in between the CPU as well as the cooler's cold plate. Screw it down in an alternating pattern, top, bottom bottom, top, bottom, just to make sure that you have even mounting pressure on the CPU. So I tested out this cooler on the Ryzen 5 3600X that Asus provided me a couple months ago for TikTok videos. So the Ryzen 5 3600X has a TDP of 95 watts. I don't know the specific TDP of the Shuriken 2. However, I believe uh, testing on a 3600X is going to be better than a 3900X because a 3900X is obviously going to be way hotter with uh, 105 watts for the TDP as well as uh, 12 cores and 24 threads. So with the Ryzen 5 3600X, the Scythe Shuriken 2, I was getting about 92 degrees Celsius at a clock speed of 3967 megahertz with Prime 95 small FFTs, which basically stresses out the CPU to its limit. And I hear Prime 95 is very unrealistic, so it's literally just a stress test to produce the maximum amount of heat possible. And the fan was spinning about 2571 RPM, which is around 100% fan speed because the maximum fan speed that Scythe advertises for this cooler is about 2500 RPM. So this cooler actually didn't do terrible with Prime 95. It was not throttling and it was still boosting a little bit over base speed for the 3600X and it wasn't thermal throttling. So 92 degrees Celsius, it's definitely not ideal. You gotta keep in mind Prime 95 is incredibly unrealistic and this is in the Loki Ghost S1 by the way. Uh, it fits perfectly in that case. So how about real world usage? And by real world usage, I mean playing games. And I could have edited a video or rendered a video using this cooler, using the CPU. However, I didn't really want to wait that long because I usually use a 12 core 3900X to render and edit. I didn't really want to downgrade to six cores and try it out. I was playing COD Modern Warfare with the Scythe Shuriken 2 to basically test it out to see if it could perform well under normal usage. And it was getting about 72 degrees Celsius at a fan speed of 2280 RPM. Uh, with a clock speed of 4216 megahertz. So it was still boosting properly, that is definitely good, and it was not approaching thermal throttle territory. 72 degrees Celsius is still pretty good while you're gaming. It's not really the best, I mean, it could be like 50 degrees or 60 degrees if you have an AIO, but this is a fairly low profile CPU cooler, and it was in my Loki Ghost S1. The side panel is perforated, however, there were no active exhaust fans because I took off my top hat, so I was just using it in the stock Loki Ghost S1 configuration. So I have to say I'm fairly impressed with the CPU cooler, it fits in the Loki Ghost S1. Mounting it is incredibly simple and performance is not bad by any means. If you're just gaming or if you plan on uh, editing videos occasionally, maybe even rendering, uh, this cooler is not that bad. As long as you don't put a crazy hot CPU on this, then it's really just going to thermal throttle. And the price tag for this cooler, I believe it's around $45 USD on Amazon, so it's not that bad. You have four heat pipes, it's fairly easy to install. Not a bad cooler and I do like how you have unlimited RAM compatibility as well as a fairly slim design and it fits in most small form factor cases. So thank you all so much for watching this review of the Scythe Shuriken 2. 
Uh, if you enjoyed this, please leave a like and subscribe because it supports my channel. I'll leave a link to the Shuriken 2 as well as Scythe's Thermal Paste in the description down below. They are going to be affiliate links for Amazon, so I do earn a tiny bit of commission from them, but it does not come at an additional cost to you. Thank you.